will still come on The Breakfast Show for you. A landslide triggered by monsoon rains results in 10 people killed. We'll be getting the latest update on the situation there after the break. Severe landslides caused by heavy monsoon rains have killed at least 10 people in Rohingya refugee camps in southern Bangladesh. More than one million people live in crowded camps in the district of Cox Bazar after fleeing a military crackdown in neighbouring Myanmar. Well, Peter Kern, a senior emergency coordinator for the International Organisation for Migration, joins us now from Bangladesh. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast Show. Good morning, yeah. Um, so the monsoon rains, they've arrived early this year. I, I remember travelling up to Cherrapunji in the north of India and, and looking down on the country of Bangladesh, you know, taking in its, its beauty, but also seeing its vulnerability. How bad is the situation today? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leah, for, uh, for shining light on this uh, tragic event. We're deeply saddened by the loss of 10 Rohingya refugees, some of them actually being our disaster management volunteers that work day and night to actually prevent things like this from happening. So, yes, absolutely. As you said, you know, this is a beautiful country, but it has its vulnerabilities. And when you add to it uh, one million Rohingya refugees uh, sheltered just across the border from Myanmar in a very temporary uh, uh, shelters, you know, they're very vulnerable to the elements that uh, they find themselves in when it comes to weather. And as you said, on Wednesday morning, we found ourselves, you know, witnessing an early arrival of monsoon season. We had, in one day, we had about three and a half inches of rain falling onto the community in, in, in these camps. So it was absolutely tragic. Even though we do have prepositioned stock, we do have people uh, uh, ready to respond, including ambulances, including protection teams. I mean, this was still something very tragic to, uh, to witness. And Peter, you mentioned there are millions of vulnerable people. What happens to them next? Where do they go? Right. So, uh, as you know, unfortunately, these are not new crises. These people arrived in 2017, so a lot has been invested into infrastructure, a lot has been invested into systems, you know, disaster preparedness, in actually empowering community volunteers from the refugee community to be prepared or to be better prepared in the conditions that they find themselves in. So what happens is an immediate response. IOM, together with other humanitarian partners, other UN agencies, made sure that these people have alternative shelter. Some other agencies made sure that there is a provision of hot meals, there's provision of mental health and psychosocial assistance. So we're not only talking about sheltering these people, we are looking at the holistic problem and making sure that all of their needs are being taken, uh, taken care of. Where if, you, if you ask what happens next, as you know, this is a very politically sensitive situation. Uh, because there is no really light at the end of the tunnel at the moment when it comes to the future of the refugees. And we need to continue shining light on this because at the moment uh, there is not much hope uh, for these people when it comes to uh, a, a bright future or the vision of them living oh. in, 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 in better conditions back on the other side of the border. Yeah, I hear what you're saying there. What's your message to the international community? What do you need? Right. So thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, last year, we uh, received about 65% of the appeal overall as a humanitarian community. This year, we are halfway through the year and we receive only about 30% of what is needed to sustain this community because this community is 100% uh, uh, dependent on humanitarian assistance. You know, when we're looking at these things, we can prevent some of these things from happening into because we are actually looking at site development looking at drainages making sure that there is there are systems that the water can flow away from the houses where these people uh, where these people reside so absolutely we cannot forget about these people it will be seven years in august but we need to make sure that these people continue to receive our attention and our assistance uh, by by august okay peter kern thank you so much for your time we appreciate it